Greetings and welcome to the Mount Rushmore podcast. I have never been so... They say justice is blind. And in this case, I am the most blind justice there ever has been because I have not played a Super Mario Brothers. I don't know what a Luigi is, what a Mario, what a Wario, what a Koopa Koopa, uh, what a Princess Chupa, Peach. Chupacabra. Chupacabra. Uh, this is the Mount Rushmore of Super Mario Brothers. And uh, who chose it? This is my choice. And I got to say, Jeff, you're doing a good job. You know what, Richard? I want to I want to call BS on Jeff right away. He knows too many. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. To, I don't know. To, to have like, this is like the person that's like, oh, I have never seen Star Wars before. What are you? Are you a, a, a Smeneral Grievous? Or what's your, <laughs> oh, are you a Dark Lord of this the source? <laughs> oh, what is that? Is that Barth? Bane and uh, do you remember when uh you know and just starts listing off like all of the different eu like books i don't, like the I don't know and i, I feel like super mario brothers is kind of like um i don't know christianity where you hmm. don't have to go to a, a day of church <laughs> and you'll know some of the main characters that's kind of true you know that when when mario was put on the um on the cross in the cross <laughs> It's a me, the savior. Um, I I chose this, uh, where I've been trying to figure out how am I going to get uh, my kid to st- into some video games a little bit, and I was trying to figure out what is the what is an easy one that has like hand eye coordination that he can use with both hands. Currently, he Felix plays like things on the iPad that are like coloring video games or like. Mm. Little yeah. things that he gets from like PBS and you know quasi educational, mm. and at some point I got to get him into like Space Invaders or like. <laughs> so I was thinking yeah. of um, Mario Brothers, and um, I don't quite have Super Mario Brothers. I have like like the new Super Mario Brothers for the Nintendo Wii, but I don't have like the original one, and it just it got me thinking about you know kind of not the original game, not Mario Bros. Mm-hmm. Mo- Brothers. But the you know Super Mario Brothers was such an influential game and such a mainstay of um, video games, um, you know, from the early '80s. And it's just one of those things. It's like, wow, they really tapped into something right away. They got it right, right away with just the entire concept of the game of like the side scrolling and the character and how to defeat people and jumping on them and like just the idea of jumping on a character. Uh, I love that that is just so ubiquitous. It's like how do you just you curb stomp someone to death. But, um, <laughs> but I thought that Mario Brothers is just one of those, or Super Mario Brothers, is just one of those games that is just has been a part of all of our lives for almost, what, 40 years now? Closing mm-hmm. in on? I don't know. It came out in, what, 1984 or something? So Now, I thought that was actually kind of like a genre of games. That was a game, Super Mario Brothers? I know yeah. Mario Kart is like a game, but so in, yeah. So the very first game that featured Mario was Donkey Kong, and mm-hmm. then they Mario and I don't know if Luigi was in it, but Mario Brothers was part of kind of uh, a game where they were kind of in the sewers, bumping turtles and mm. doing sewer shit, and then mm-hmm. for the Nintendo Entertainment System, I think they had it out in the arcades as well. They had Super Mario Brothers, which is the one where they get the fire flower and fight Koopa and go through the eight, eight levels and whatever. But mm-hmm. I don't know if it was the first side scroller like that. I haven't done any of that sort of research, but it, yeah. I think it has been, what, uh, you know, one of the top three or four most influential, impactful video games of all time. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Well, let's jump in, Richard. You're the most Italian. I am of, <laughs> of, of, of the three of us. I am the one. Yeah. Who frequently dresses in overalls yeah. and wears a big bushy <laughs> mustache. Okay, so yeah, you, you uh, start us off. All right, so my first choice are the warp tunnels in Super right. Mario Brothers. And the fact that if you beat the game and you brag about beating the game, and you beat the game using the warp tunnels, get out of here. <laughs> you didn't beat the game, right? Yeah. We all, Michael, we, we can agree on this, right? That's not beating the game. I I would say that uh, yes. Uh, go ahead Uh-oh. with the rest of it. It sounds contentious. It sounds like no, no, no. I I I understand where where Rich is going. I think you have a very valid point. It's like uh, it's like cheating to get to the end and then jumping on Bowser's head, and being like, "Look, I did it." But it's like, hmm, hmm, I don't yeah. Think. To me, beating I the game. To me, beating the game means that you beat every obstacle that you possibly could. 
in anticipation oh. of getting to the final boss and then beating the final boss. It's like skiing around the the flags or something. Yeah. Like Are you yeah. familiar with the warp tunnels? Jeff, or am I talking well, over your head? I know in, due to its Italian heritage, they are inspired by <laughs> Venice, the, 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 the channels in Venice. Is that correct? Nailed it. Nailed it. Okay. Okay. Good. No. Okay. So that, basically, right. basically you're in the sewers and you, you, there are certain ways that you can get to different little uh, pipelines. And, and there are certain pipelines that will take you to where you can skip different levels and go to a level that's further on ahead in the game. Okay. And by the use of warp tunnels, you can skip many of the worst uh, uh, levels in Super Mario Brothers mm -hmm. and pretty quickly get to the final level. Okay, so you beat it, the game, but you have a low point score, maybe? You something? have a low points. You have a lower point score. And I mean, that's that's a whole separate conversation. Like, did anyone actually ever pay attention to the point totals when they were playing Mario Brothers? I, I don't I think, think so. There, I think there are such unique challenges in that, in with that sense. Like I, I always tried to collect as many coins as I possibly could because you could get an extra life there. Sure. And then, uh, at the end of each level, you have to like kind of jump. You have to pass basically like this flagpole that says that you have completed the level. The level, and I've always tried to get as many points as I could on the flagpole. So I think that there are like those little. I wonder what the highest score. I, it's a. I don't know. Uh, I think you oh, can. Yeah. I think you can flip the counter. I think at some yeah. point. I think I've seen games where people have got to nine 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 nine. But yeah, the the warp tunnels or the war. The, the, I think they're technically called warp zones. So I should should use their technically correct term here. Mm. Um, you can go forward. There's also. Uh, you can go backward. So the easiest thing you do at, 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 at stage two of level one, you can get into a pipe and it'll take you all the way up possibly to level four. Mm -hmm. And then in level four, you can go all the way to level eight and get to the last level of the game. Mm -hmm. So in the course of basically two worlds, you can get all the way to the final stage. Hmm. That just seems like that's not... Oh, well, can it just right. for the listeners? Could you tell us what they're missing out? Like, is there an extra bowl of spaghetti or something like that? Or <laughs> I'm trying to think what you miss in some of those worlds, and it's been a long time since I played uh, Super Mario Brothers. Maybe there's some luxurious leather goods that you could pick up at a certain uh, like an outdoor outdoor uh, outdoor yeah. piazza or yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I think Michael, help me out here. Is do you skip the water level if you use the warp zones? I believe that you do. Yeah, you get through a lot of difficulty. You get through a lot of difficulty of like the stages that have like these giant mushroom lands where you can fall off to your doom. You skip like these the water levels. Um, um, you skip um, a lot of just the more difficult dungeons. I mean, if you're going, if you're only basically playing this game through to get through like the warp zones, you're playing, you know. Each level, there's eight total worlds, and each world has four sections. So you're skipping 85% of the game to get to the final level. Mm -hmm. Which just, and, to, me, it's, to me, it just seems yeah. like it's bastardizing the, the point of the game. Because the point of the game should be you're enjoying... If, 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 let me put it this way. If you bought Super Mario Brothers, and there were three worlds in it total... And you got to the third world, and then all of a sudden the game was over. You won. You beat the last bad guy. You would feel ripped off. You would feel like you did not get enough game for your your dollar. Mm -hmm. So why would you want to purposely do that just so you could brag? Oh yeah, I got to, I beat the bad the last big bad. Hmm. Look how good I am at this. It just seems like it's it's defeating the purpose of actually buying the game in the mm -hmm. first place to not play some of the levels that are included. Do you know if this is... Now, I'm just going to blame the wokeification of America on this. Is this woke parents right. wanting the easy win for their kids so everybody gets a ribbon? Is this what this is, the wussification? Since yeah, they're not I, the greatest generation, they have to have a 
uh, everybody gets a trophy. Is that what this is? Make it no. easy? This is, no. This is you've played the game so many times that you are trying to uh, accomplish something a different way. Like, I don't know if... It's interesting, though, because Richard's kind of speaking of two things. He's talking about the warp zones, but then he's also commenting on bragging about beating the game via these warp zones. And I think those are two different things. I think that warp zones are obviously built into the game as a thing that you can kind of unlock and discover. It's a hidden sort of to cheat code area. Yeah. But then there is a playground attitude of like, Oh yeah, I can be super Mario brothers, but the only way you can do it is if you're doing it this underhanded way. Yeah. That's not necessarily underhanded. It's just, it's a shortcut. It takes, it's you're taking, you're, taking 80% of the game away. Now, if you, say you accomplish this task, go to the playground with Felix. Yeah. Love it. Is there a basketball court for kids? And if so, is it, is the hoop a little bit lower on that one? Well, when I make, when I make him play against the guys that are six for four and yes. he, you know, can throw the, <laughs> throw the ball, you know, a foot and a half above his head and they, you know, they come in like Matumbo and knock him down. And, you know, he tries to do, you know, they do a lot of body checking and they do a yeah. lot of that thing where they they push their their rump into you, yeah. And you know <laughs> they knock him down. And I just tell him, listen, if yeah. you want it, if you want to be on the blacktop, you got to, yeah. You know this ball is heavy for you, and you can't <laughs> ever make a shot. But this this is the world we live in. <laughs> so deal with it. That's tough love. You know, yeah. that we pick it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, uh, Michael, what's your first? Uh, my first choice is the uh, debate that I re- recall having as a kid. Um, is Mario and or Luigi, is he headbutting the bricks when he breaks them or is he hitting them with his fist? <laughs> now, oh. we have the technology to zoom in and see how many, um, all the, dif- the, you know, the little pixels uh, uh, to examine it today. But as a kid, Man, I was 100% on the side of Mars jumping up and knocking knocking things off, blowing up bricks with his head. Mm-hmm. Doesn't make a lot of sense because you can get a lot of brain damage, a lot of concussion, a lot of, you know, as a parent, mm-hmm. why isn't he wearing a helmet? That's mm-hmm. not very safe, but he's a grown man or he can become a grown man. But I remember that big discussion going on of like, what was Mario doing? And how bad did you feel for when Mario is like shrunken down when he's not Super Mario, mm-hmm. uh, when he's so little and he can't break those bricks? With his oh head. wow! Or maybe even his tiny fist. I saw. A, I remember a few years ago, I saw a YouTube video someone had made, and it's Mario going along, and he hit, jumps to hit the brick, and he makes like this sick crunching sound. <laughs> And falls on the ground with like stars coming around his head. And then a few minutes later, or a couple of seconds later, Luigi comes up and is like, what happened to you? Oh, I hit them my head on the brick. Oh, this one right here? Let me get it. And he's like, no, Luigi. Thud, crunch. And he's just like dead. And Mario's sitting there weeping over his brother who'd been killed by the bricks. <laughs> So fo- so far, you guys are basically doing a what's the deal with uh, for Super Mario Brothers. It's not like I loved blank. It's I was uh, this pisses me off. Is that right? No, I don't think yeah. so. I mean, this, this okay. I feel very defensive now against this okay. guy that's never played this goddamn. Game yeah, no, okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, <guy>. I'm, <laughs> I'm just glad that having visited Italy, this is all still true to what I saw mm. when I was visiting there. The, yeah. The geography and the way, uh, well, you know, if you treated. if you go if you go see some of those the ruins in Rome, you know, the Colosseum. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they look that way because a certain certain plumber and his brother were jumping around, hitting <laughs> things with their hands and or heads, <laughs> knocking bricks down. That's the inspiration That's for it. the game: is the ruining That's... of uh, ancient civilization via via two Italian American plumbers. Yeah, I was surprised. I was surprised to learn in Italy that there are just tortoises walking around the streets <laughs> that you can just jump on and then shoot at people. <laughs> okay, Richard, what is your second one? Is it the uh, tortoises? No, it is not the tortoises. Okay. Although that would be a fun choice. Okay. Uh, my second choice is Super Mario Brothers Two. Mm. Oh, the for, 
the forgotten game, I think, in a lot of ways. Because people remember Super Mario Brothers because everyone had that game because it came with the NES. And everyone remembers playing that game. And that was the first game a lot of us got obsessed with trying to beat uh, on the NES. And then people remember Super Mario Brothers 3 because that's like at the that's the one where, where Mario can fly. Yeah. Basically. But then in the middle of it, there's Super Mario Brothers 2, which I have to be honest with you, I didn't own. So I have very little memories of the game. Hmm. I remember playing it at friends' houses, but I didn't buy it, so I don't I don't have the same connection to it as I did the original Super Mario Brothers. So I went through and I was watching some videos on it and I, I had an emulator where I was playing playing around on it. And it's a fun game. It's, it's the real first weird. It's real yeah, it, up. it's real weird. It's the first game where you can pick up and throw things. Oh. At and apparently it's one of maybe the first side scrolling game that where you actually could do that. This was a big innovation at the time. Huh. That there was the first game where you could pick up a brick or pick pick something up and throw it at an enemy and then you could kill it that way instead of having as Michael said just to curb stomp it. And I just I I just think it, it gets short shrift because it's not it's like Michael said it's kind of a weird game. There's mm-hmm. those like what are those hooded kind of characters that look like clansmen. Look like clan <laughs> yes. Thank you. But, I know what you mean. The ones that they kind of had like a red robe with the big white eyes with like the, they kind of look like Jawas. They do look like Jawas. Exactly. So there's all these weird characters that are outside the realm of the first game, but actually it's a pretty fun game to play. And if you haven't played it in a while, I'd recommend giving it a shot. What What's, what's really, uh, the game has this great sort of um, like movie sequel quality to it where, uh, Anytime you see like a a movie sequel, everything has to be kind of amped up and everything has to be similar but changed a little bit different. And one of the great innovations in um, Super Mario Brothers 2 is that you can choose not just from Mario and Luigi, but you can be um, a princess, a toadstool, or a princess peach, and you could be um, toad, I believe. And each one of the the characters have their own kind of skill set. They can do like... Luigi can kind of jump a little bit further than Mario can jump and the princess can she's not quite as strong at at picking up and throwing things but she can kind of float using her kind of petticoats and Toad I think is who the fourth character is is a little bit faster and can do like so it like it takes the characters it says okay how can we do this game again and change it and ramp it up and throw things and uh, I believe you can not only move right across the screen but you could move left as well so you could side scroll in Mm -hmm. either direction yes and um all these different things it was like okay we we have the first game what can we do to just dramatically improve kind of everything about it and and add a little bit more nuance to you know mario and luigi in the first game were just kind of the same character colored slightly differently or green and versus red or whatever um and yeah, this game kind of made them into characters versus um, just um, kind of avatars that you play. Were, were you saying that there they were they weren't that differentiated in the first game, and in two they were? Yeah, yeah. I okay. mean, I think they're stylistically they looked um, at least between Mario and Luigi looked they looked different in Super Mario Brothers two. Luigi was a lot as he's kind of come to become um, taller and leaner and. Mm-hmm. Um, Mario was still kind of remained um, a little bit mm-hmm. uh, shorter and squatter. And Richard, were you also saying like the this is this is my education, and I appreciate it that they innovations in the game were innovations for games. Yes, right? yeah. yes. Uh, from some of my research, it appears it was the first side scroller to be able to allow you to pick things up and throw them. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool! So the power sets were new in the genre, not just in the for the character. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool. All right, uh, Winfield, what's your second choice? Um, my second choice um, is uh, the super underrated music uh, and music Uh-oh. cues within Super Mario Brothers, where mm-hmm. uh, the music itself is super fun and joyous, 
And then all of a sudden you kind of go underground or you go to an underground level and it becomes really kind of dark and ominous. Mm -hmm. Or you go into the um, of kind of aforementioned kind of water worlds and it becomes this real bubbly, fun, uh, kind of silly seaside music. Um, and then you have this timer that's running constantly in the game. And as you're getting down like under a minute, the music starts to speed up everything. You get this wonderful music cue where it's like, dun, da, 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 and then you have to realize, Oh, I have a minute left to try to finish this game. Mm -hmm. And I think Mario brothers on top of like being just a, a great game to play has this, this such iconic music and sound effects and these music cues that go along with it, that um, whether you're transitioning through like a, a uh, like a, uh, one of the warp pipes, and it has like this whack, whack, whack to travel uh, down the pipe or to go up a beanstalk or what have you. Mm -hmm. um, all the different music in it really helps sell um, this world. And I think the music in particular is really kind of sets it apart from a bunch of other games that I remember, you know, I don't really remember playing or I don't really the, remember the music from other games as much as, as this. I mean, maybe it's because I played Mario Brothers so much, but like, Mm -hmm. um if you played like a game like legend of zelda they had basically two musics they had like the music that was like above ground and the music that was like in the dungeon and that was kind of it but this seemed to have music that like changed from um kind of level to level and things kind of um seemed like even for being one of the earlier nintendo games um pretty advanced in how it kind of um approached music and little music cues like that that's cool. I, I feel like Mario Brothers is one of those games where I, I'll see a social media post of a symphony or somebody playing it or somebody playing it on a, you know, a water, <laughs> glasses of water or something. People seem to have a huge <laughs> affinity for, for the music, like an orchestra playing it or it being adapted a lot. So, yeah. <clears throat> uh, okay, so we are at our halftime and we're going to invite you to go out and... Uh, enjoy all that we have to offer on our Spotify, on our iTunes, or sorry, I guess it's uh, Apple Podcasts now, or the podcast app in your player, and then do us a favor, any kind of feedback. Just Is this thing on? Is this thing on? Is what, what I think we're thinking of as podcasters. We don't know what you're thinking in the audience. We'd love, to, we'd love to know. So if you give a rating to some episodes or give some feedback, we sure would appreciate it. And, um, you know, it's never too early to start planning. We got uh, deep, deep discounts on um, all the episodes, too. So if you want to buy uh, bundles, we've got bundles, 10 episodes. Um, you get a bundle of 30 episodes for half the price. And then you can buy all the episodes. All of it's the same price. No, zero monies. Zero monies. So if you get your holiday gift giving going right now, give the gift of the Mount Rushmore podcast. And now we're going to go into Richard's third choice. Okay, what the hell is my third choice? Oh, here we go. No, it's it is speed runs. Mm. Uh, what? Super... <laughs> I love I love your uh, I love the first their opening diatribe about um, people not being not getting credit for doing things too quickly, and then number three coming back with speed runs. Uh, God bless well, you, Richard Metreddy. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so speed runs are essentially what they sound like. They are people attempting to beat the Super Mario Brothers game as quickly as possible. Um, and for a long time, there was, for two years in fact, uh, up until last year, four minutes and 55 seconds was the fastest that anyone could beat Super Mario Brothers. Oh, wow. It was almost exactly that number. Um the Super Mario Brothers speedrun leaderboard had 10 records in the 455 range. Differences in them coming down to milliseconds. But nobody could top get down into the 254 or 454 category. Wow. Um, it was the equivalent of the four minute mile. People thought that it literally may not be possible mm -hmm. to get to, to, to trim enough milliseconds off of your speed run to be able to do that. That was until August of 2021 when a speedrunner uh, called Nitsky was able to beat it, clocking in at 4 minutes, 54 seconds, and 
9.48 milliseconds. It was the fastest that anyone at the time had ever beaten Super Mario Brothers. He did it. We did it, guys. Wow. We 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 have we have topped science. Mm-hmm. As humans, there is very little we can left to accomplish at this point. If we can beat Super Mario Brothers in under four minutes and fifty five seconds, what more is, is it, that, what more is, is as a society do we have to do? Yeah. Is that is that a speed run using the warp pipes or is it? Um... No, that's that that's just going <laughs> through the whole game. Really? Yeah. That and is the, outstanding. And there are like glitches that, that, seems, you, that, that seems impossible. Now there are glitches that you have to um, overcome, or that you I should say that you have to use in order to accomplish this. Like if, for example, there is a, a a flagpole glitch that apparently you can looking it up right now to explain this, but apparently that when you get to the flag, the you can actually make Mario glitch into the block that's holding the flag which hmm. lets him finish the level without the flag having to come down, hmm. which saves you like four or five seconds. So in order to successfully do this, you have to be able to do that every time you get to the block. So there's an element of, and, and that we're talking about, you have to not just be able to hit the right pixel. You have to be able to hit the right sub pixel, which is the pixels in between the pixels to be hmm. able to get it right. It's just wild stuff. And if you watch these speed runs, it's just like these people are doing things at another, their brains are working at a, at a level that I can't comprehend. And it's a regular NES. It's not like on an emulator or. Uh, Nifsky's was on an emulator. Uh, Uh, I'm looking at the, uh, I just went and looked at the uh, official Mario, Super Mario Brothers speed run leaderboard over at speedrun.com. And it looks like that someone called Miniland uh, was able to also, six months ago, break the uh, four-minute and 54-second barrier using just the regular NES. Wow. Can you imagine the mom comes in and unplugs the game like in the middle of that thing? Yeah. I told you to do your, I told you you had to do the laundry. (laughs) I can do it in four minutes. Four seconds. <laughs> I wish Nivsky, Nivsky does everything fast. Like, can you imagine like his un his un uh, unsatisfied wife? Like all yes. the, all the things that <laughs> Nivsky has. Like, oh, that's so funny. This guy knows the shortcut to work. <laughs> okay, so speed runs uh, seem seem to me like when you see a kid solving a Rubik's cube or stacking cups yes. really quickly, it's kind of you're not doing it for the the for the sheer fun of playing you're doing it uh, as it's a sport into itself yes it is a competitive venture at this point and like i said people really don't give a crap about the number of points it's really just all about the mm-hmm. speed at this point are there that many variables in these like old cartridge games like it's not like the game like a rubik's cube could be any pattern when you pick it up but is super mario brothers the same like the the things come at you the same way in every game or is that like a new game where there's randomized? I think they come at you pretty much the same way every game. Okay. I think it's like like Pac-Man, where Ooh. for each board, pattern. there's a certain pattern. If you can okay. beat the pattern, you can beat the board. Okay. It's cooked into the cartridge. It's not like it's... I believe so, be. yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, wow. Do we think maybe it'll be three minutes? It, it's got to be. Is there never going to be anybody faster than that? I, I don't know. They said you couldn't beat four minutes and 55 seconds. Uh-huh. So maybe we can get it to four minutes and 53 seconds. Yeah. I imagine that guy is probably freaking brilliant, Nisky, and he's uh, he's sparing us, you know, curing cancer and uh, uh, cold fusion and <laughs> sure. all the things. Yeah. <laughs> that he could perpetual be. motion. He could be inventing perpetual motion, but yeah. instead. <laughs> yeah. He's oh, stomping go- Goombas underneath the, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the right. five minute mark every time. All right. All right. Winfield, what's your third? All right, I'm going to stay within the same sort of uh, framing of um, when you play a game so much, you start looking for um, different ways to kind of get ahead. And this isn't necessarily um, a cheat in the game, but it's learning the Infinity Lives trick in Super Mario Brothers, where there you have to play the game, obviously. You're not like doing anything untowards, but there are a couple of different parts in the game where 
uh, like one of the turtle shells is coming down a set of stairs. And if you jump on the turtle shell, you get a hundred points. And if you jump on the same, like a turtle shell or a characters twice in a row, it goes from like 100 to 400 and 400 to a thousand or something. So if you kind of hopscotch from one to another, you can gain more points and um, get a one up. If you do like a, a, you know, maneuver a couple, you know, multiple times in a row, you can get a one up. Well, at some point somebody figured out that you can jump on this one turtle shell that's bounding, that's bouncing back against like a brick. And if you do it and you keep like your, keep the, the jump rhythm steady, you can eventually get to basically like infinity lives because the video game taps out at 128 lives. I, you know, a lot of like old 8-bit games are built on certain sorts of, um, um, you know, bit limitation structures. I assume that's why they, um, why if you get to like, if you, so basically if you're jumping on this turtle long enough, you can get to a point where you start maxing out how many one-ups and extra characters you can get that hmm. the game basically is like, uh, we can't we can't do more than 128 but we yeah. can do basically you you can just never never die mm-hmm. and it doesn't matter mm-hmm. and this sort of trick i remember doing a lot when when i first learned about it and then having that freedom to go about and complete the rest of the game without having to worry so much about um oh, i'm down to one extra life and getting frustrated with falling down that chasm or getting burned by lava or bullet bill Mm -hmm. comes along and blows you up or all these different things that are so frustrating about not being able to complete a game when you're you know eight Mm -hmm. years old or however it is i remember learning that trick felt like it opened up so much to just being like okay well now now i don't just have two men left now i have infinity men left and i think that was also the place where i first learned what the infinity symbol was the little sideways (laughs) being like okay uh i See, mom, this game is educational. <laughs> well, that's awesome because it seems to seem like that uh, is allowing a young player or a person to have a little bit of a some agency on actually f- finishing it. Because, yeah, it almost seems like a hack that benefits the the person who isn't skilled enough in the game yet or wants to become skilled in the games, willing to work at it, but. And it's yeah. definitely, it feels like one of those things that's either passed passed down from the schoolyard, either someone showed you that trick. It was, you know, uh, Billy Mitchell came over and showed you that trick, or it was like you got the <laughs> Nintendo Power. It's funny. Uh, I had a friend named Billy Mitchell. I'm not talking Did about Did you really? The, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm not, not talking about the creep that it's like. The Donkey Kong Jr. guy. Donkey Kong yeah. uh, kind of a-hole. Um, but I had a friend, Billy was actually the one that had a, Sega Master System, so maybe it wasn't him. Because I remember playing like Alex Kidd uh, over at his house and thinking that game was like you know the end all and be all. But, um, but or is something that like came in like the Nintendo Power magazine that I subscribed mm-hmm. to that kind of would show like walkthroughs of and maps of different games and probably had like tips of how to you know if you go to level three one, uh, this is where you stomp that turtle to death so you get <laughs> infinity lives. <laughs> So you're pro. Now that's a hack, right? So Richard, how do you feel about that? No, that but that's that's I'm I'm less upset about that because you're playing, <laughs> still playing. It allows you to play the whole game. It does. You're still getting yeah. the full game experience. It's actually helping you get less, like Michael said, get less frustrated with with the game itself, and allows you to feel more comfortable to, to kind of progress through the game. Yeah. So I'm 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 okay with that. Okay. Yeah, that that does seem what what is fun about the uh games pa- in past is kind of like how we used to learn about music. You had to kind of do it in in person or through some kind of uh limited resource like a magazine or like the person at the record store or something like that or your buddy. So there was much more um uh anecdotal or uh ways of of learning about that stuff. You couldn't just kind of google it, right? Yeah, that's cool. Okay, uh, the final choice for Manfredi. All right, my final choice is a little esoteric, but we'll plow through it anyway. Oh. Uh, the Pacific Opera Project is a opera company here in, based here in Los Angeles, and they do sort of pop culture infused, frequently do pop culture infused takes on opera classics, and. One of their most popular ones that they've done, and uh, I got to take the family to a few years ago, 
um, it's back in 2019, was the their version of the Magic Flute that is Nintendo based. Wow! So all of the characters um, are it, instead of it, instead of the classic characters from the the Magic Flute, they have they're based off of Nintendo characters. So the main character in the Magic Flute, who is uh, Tamino is actually Link from Legends of Zelda. Uh. <laughs> uh, his his love interest, Pamina, is Princess Zelda. And the Super Mario Brothers uh, part of this is his main sidekick, Papa Gino, uh-huh. is basically Super Mario in the opera. And they it, it, the way they do it is really great. They have, um, instead of being chased by a dragon, Tamino, Tamino is being chased by Bowser. Um they make lots of references in the in the the play in the text itself to uh classic uh Super Nintendo and Nintendo games. And with Mario, my favorite line is one of the characters is talking to him and it's like, Well, who are you? And he talks like like Mario, so he's like <laughs> I'm a Papagino. <laughs> and he, the, the other character goes, wait a second, I know you, you're Mario. No, you cannot <laughs> say that. You will invoke the scariest, scariest creatures ever. Oh, monsters? No, even worse, copyright lawyers. <laughs> I it, it was something we took, our, our son was probably seven at the time, and not necessarily an, an opera fan. My daughter is a big opera fan so she would loved it right away but my son saw it and just absolutely loved it the entire time and then thought it was just the funniest thing and if you have a not a background in classic nintendo video games you will catch all these in jokes and references that they make throughout them throughout the uh, course of the the opera and you'll really enjoy it and it just so happens to be the pacific opera project is performing the magic flute this year over at the uh i think it's the uh el portal theater up in north hollywood so up by you michael so anyone who is in the southern california greater los angeles area i would highly recommend you check out pacific opera project and make sure you get tickets for the magic flute they are not sponsors although they could be if anyone's listening (laughs) but they do a great job with it and i just can't recommend it enough that's awesome that's awesome, making it accessible and fun. So what's, it's funny, at this at this time, like, it feels like uh, Super Mario Brothers is probably just a little less old as the actual opera. Yeah. <laughs> the, the definitely <laughs> skewed very, uh, the, the audience definitely skewed very uh, Gen X and yeah. older. Yeah. Put it well, that way. Whatever you need to do to bring those people in. Uh, exactly. To, see, to, see to the opera. Go yeah. for it. Okay, uh, uh, Michael, what's your last choice? Uh, my last choice is the not super great one season long uh, <laughs> TV series, oh. the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, that featured uh, wrestler Captain Lou Albano as the Mario Mario. Hmm. And uh, also featured... Uh, such amazing songs as the Mario rap as the opening theme song and do the Mario as the closing theme song. Oh, this show wasn't great. It was a bunch of uh, dorks dressed up uh, as Mario, especially captain Lou and um, an actor named Danny Wells as Luigi. And then it went into like little animated segments where they had like a little cartoon show, but just, just the idea of uh, who we're going to get to be Mario and captain Lou was uh, I don't know if he was the number one choice, but the Captain Lou Albano would just jump at it and be and be it. It's just wild to me. Just, just, just it's so strange. Do you think he but, said like, "Show me the script" or "Show me the cash"? No, like, which, no. <laughs> I, I, well, I mean, Captain Lou, he's so funny in that. Uh, you know, he's just a mainstay of being part of like Cindy Lauper's career. Yeah. Uh, as well and also to have this on his resume as being also a, you know the guy that has a, a you know rubber bands safety mm-hmm. pin through his face I mean, <laughs> just so wild but it but, wasn't um, something that was translated from japanese or something like that it was 
produced originally for the yeah. Western markets. Yeah, it is. I mean, the animation is pretty terrible. The mm -hmm. uh, uh, the acting in the live action sequences are pretty terrible. But it just goes to show that um, I think Mario Brothers was becoming something more and more mainstay or, mm -hmm. or mainstream. You know, they've they've had other sort of video game properties in the past that yeah. have kind of tried this. There was like a Qbert TV show for a while that wasn't very good. There was a uh, I think oh, there's a, a there, there's a whole CBS uh, 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 block in the Saturday morning cartoons that were video game because there was a Pac-Man one. There was Cubert. Mm, okay. I'm trying to think. I there's the a one. one. Yeah, there was a Pac-Man where it showed his adventures as like a businessman. Mm -hmm. it, it was very <laughs> trippy and strange. Go on. I do, I do appreciate the idea of a Pac-Man like not getting a business deal and then just eating whoever. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, the sh you know, I think that, that Mario Brothers, just like kind of Richard mentioned earlier, where it was, you know, um, the Nintendofication of things uh, being applied to, you know, a serious piece of, um, uh, of not a musical, but of... Uh, An opera an opera mm -hmm. uh, just shows that you know, sometimes these things are so invasive, but also malleable and, uh, but also maybe you're just trying to, you know, get more people to buy video games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's an, an, an interesting thing that a, a, a field of 640 by 720 pixels <laughs> can, can, you can tell a story on that. And then that story can be so powerful that it merits hopping in, into another medium. I imagine Albano was like, Look, they're gonna hire somebody to play this, and it needs to be an Italian. And so, hey, <laughs> I don't want to do this show. Oh, so now, like now Captain Lou is is the woke one. Yeah, he's, he's standing up for mob. yeah, standing yeah. up for <laughs> uh, Italian Americans everywhere. There are, I did not, I did not realize, Michael. Did you know there was a Super Mario Brothers three animated series? No. Yeah, apparently it uh, ran from nineteen ninety two. Or it ran it ran in 1990 actually, and huh. uh, ran on NBC. So now you huh. know. Now you know. Okay, so uh, I'm looking at <clears throat> Super Mario Brothers cereal. Have you guys ever? Well, it was, sure. it was part of the Nintendo cereal system. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making that up. That's what the cereal yeah, was Le called with, Le with Legend of Zelda. Yeah. Yes. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what? How does this work? You pop the cartridge into your bowl or something like that. There Where were, the... there were, there was, there were two bags inside the box, mm -hmm. and each bag, like the bag, there was like one bag, but it was divided into two bags, and each side, each side had a different cereal. One had the Super Nintendo, they had the mm -hmm. Super Mario Brothers cereal. The other had the Legend of Zelda cereal. Wow, that's insane. That is pretty cool. One hundred percent had it. Yeah, I did too. What was it, was it clearly like um, Captain Crunch in a different shape or something like that? It all tastes it, the same. It all tastes same. like generic sugary cereal, sugar, with sugar stuff, marshmallow bits. I'm I'm pretty sure they're yeah. all kind of flavory taste. Fla they're all uh, yeah. fruity flavored. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. You know that was the, that was the difference. I think Zelda was fruity flavored and Mario was something else. Berry flavored. Look at the research that we've done. <laughs> Mario Brothers was fruity. Zelda was fruity. berry. Okay. Captain Crunch tastes like the roof of your mouth. Like, ow. This yes. Tastes like, tastes like blood. <laughs> tastes like blood. Let's go. Uh, since you came out swinging so hard with it and you seem to have so much animosity to it. And it does speak to the wimpification of today's youth, uh, warp tunnels. Let's go with that. Because clearly uh, there was a lot of um, kind of vinegar in behind that one. And... Um, also, because I think it was a little bit of the the wimp, you know, pro the wimpification is, uh, sorry, Michael's concern about the headbutting, and are we concussing <laughs> our Mario's? Like, what's happening here? Is this good for them? Do they need special headgear? Should we get softer bricks? Is there um, an animated Will Smith who is a Nigerian doctor yeah. who is very concerned about Mario? Yeah, speaking out against it. Um, okay, and. Um, music cues, I thought that was really cool. And then uh, that was also partnered with um, Richard's discovery of the, the Pacific Opera um, 
uh, company's production of uh, the Magic Flute. So that was cool. So th those are the four. And uh, I'm going to go get on my my, my magic, magical dinosaur and go boop, 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 See, and play. Richard. No, he's trying <laughs> he's, too hard. He's, yeah, he's going to get off this and he's going to go... Uh, He's going to do a speed run of his own. Speed run Hopkins over here, yeah. <laughs> uh, this has been the Mount Rushmore of Super Mario Brothers. I am always Luigi. I'm a Richard. <laughs> I'm Michael. Oh. Hey, you're not going to get two in a row from me. No. No, no way. <laughs> <laughs>